Part 1. When to Strip Current Trends in Floor Care At one time, the best floor care involved frequent stripping and waxing. At that time, floor finishes really contained wax, and the most sophisticated piece of floor equipment available was the standard swing buffer. We've come a long way since then. The current trend in floor care is to avoid stripping and refinishing as much as possible and to prolong the stripping cycle for as long as possible. Stripping cycles of five years or even longer are not unusual. There are a number of reasons for this. Floor finishes are much more durable now. Floor care techniques have also evolved so as to extend the life of the finish. These techniques include better daily care thanks to auto scrubbers and microfiber mops, as well as better gloss restoration techniques such as high speed burnishing and the use of chemical restorers, which keep the finish responsive to the effects of burnishing. There are a number of negative things associated with stripping that supervisors and employees should take account of as they develop a floor care program and make decisions about floor work. Stripping is among the most expensive of floor care operations. The expense is due both to its being a labor-intensive task, which takes a lot of time to complete, and also due to the cost of modern floor finishes. Stripping is also among the most hazardous of floor care operations. The stripper itself is considered a hazardous caustic chemical and can cause both eye and skin damage. In addition to this, stripping makes the floor very slippery, thereby creating a slip and fall hazard. Stripping also has a, the potential to damage floors and other building surfaces. Certain floor types, such as rubber, can be permanently damaged by stripper. If used too strongly or allowed to set too long, even floors for which the stripper is meant to be used on can be damaged. Floor adhesives that hold the tiles down can be dissolved by the stripper, especially if the stripper is too strong or sets too long. Oddly enough, newer floors are more prone to adhesive damage than older floors because of the changes in the formulation of tile adhesives. Surfaces other than the floor, such as furniture or wood doors, can be damaged or permanently discolored by the stripper. Stripping also creates waste products that may be harmful to the environment. This is the result of the fact that many floor finishes contain zinc and metal compounds which are slow to break down in the environment. Each time we strip a floor, we put more of these chemicals into the water supply where the zinc and other metals can reach levels that are toxic to aquatic life. Now that you understand the various costs and other negative factors involved with stripping, you are in a better position to understand when to strip. Stripping is generally used only as a last resort when other methods such as deep scrubbing and recoating, will not restore a finish to the desired level of appearance. There are four main reasons why stripping might be necessary. Deeply embedded dirt, extremely uneven layering of the finish, too much yellowing, and extensive irreparable damage to the finish. The damage could be the result of either normal wear over time or the result of some event such as a water break or heavy items being dragged across a large section of the floor. Judging whether stripping is needed is no simple matter. All stripping projects should be discussed with supervision. Judging whether a floor should be stripped or not often involves numerous factors. Here are a few questions to be answered before you and your supervisor make the decision to strip a floor. What kind of damage is present? Answering this question often involves some expertise. A floor that looks somewhat dirty or dull might easily be repaired by just scrubbing off the top dirty coats of finish and then providing a few layers of top coating. How extensive is the damage? On a floor that is just worn in one place, spot repair may be possible. Is it a good time for stripping and refinishing? If the area is due for major remodeling, it's probably not a good idea to strip and wax it. Sometimes customers have preferences for when they want the floor to be refinished. They may want it looking its best for an annual board meeting in May, for instance. Is there adequate time for stripping and refinishing? Stripping a large section of floor and leaving it bare for a long period can lead to permanent damage to the floor. 
Before you start a project, judge whether and when you will be able to finish it. Are there other factors that rule against stripping? In some buildings on campus, we have to adjust our techniques because of floors that leak or tiles that easily pop out of place. Should we strip this floor? Notice how the floor seems to be darker in various areas. This is due to uneven layering that has developed. The floor itself is uneven. Uneven floors like this are prone to develop more layers of finish in the low spots of the floor. This is due to the fact that the finish is harder to scrub or strip off of the low spots. It's possible that the last time the floor was stripped, finish was left in the low spots. It is also possible that the floor has been deep scrubbed and recoated several times. With each deep scrubbing, more finish was removed from the higher spots than from the lower spots and the uneven layering developed over time. No matter how the uneven layering developed, it can only be corrected by stripping. Should we strip this floor? It's a little hard to tell from the photos, but this classroom floor is full of scratches. Just from the photos, you can tell that the shine is not very deep. However, also notice that the layering seems pretty even. There is no buildup along the wall. A deep scrubbing and recoating will probably restore this floor well. Repeated deep scrubbing and recoating can lead to noticeable buildup along the walls, but this does not appear to be the problem here. However, if this room went through several cycles of being scrubbed and recoated, and then scratched up, and then scrubbed and recoated again, it would develop uneven layering that would be most noticeable along walls and at the heavy traffic areas. Time of year is always a consideration with classroom floors, so the question of is it a good time to strip is relevant. In the summertime, we might want to strip and refinish this floor in order to interrupt a prolonged scrub recoat cycle. In the summer, we have more time to strip floors and allow them to cure properly. The floor is 900 square feet and will take about two hours to strip and about another three to four hours to lay down five layers of finish. Time can be saved by doing several classrooms at once, but it is a time-consuming process. To scrub and recoat this floor with two top coats can be done in a couple of hours. After scrubbing and recoating, the floor itself might even be more durable and scratch resistant since the top coats are going on top of an established base coat. New finish needs time to cure and can be more easily and more deeply scratched after it has been put down. Burnishing helps make the finish harder to scratch. Should we strip this floor? In contrast to the scratching on the classroom floor that we just looked at, the damage to these floors is deep and cannot be repaired except through stripping and refinishing. If you just deep scrub these floors, you would easily remove all the finish in some areas of the floor, but other areas would still have a good amount of finish on them. The result would be uneven layering. The problem here is uneven layering, but it is also very localized. It's likely the problem came about as a result of poor strip and refinish technique. Either all the finish was not stripped away at the door entrance, or some parts of the entrance received more coats of finish than other parts. It is also possible that stripper slurry flowed under the door and dried. You will be learning how to do a cut line at doorways to avoid these kinds of problems. Since the problem is very localized, we often just live with the problem until the next time stripping or scrubbing is due. If we did want to fix the problem, spot stripping and refinishing is possible. You are also likely to encounter areas where there is heavy damage in a very localized area, such as under a water fountain or in a particular doorway. Again, stripping a whole floor to fix a problem in just a small area is not necessary. Spot repair is often possible and can often easily be accomplished when scrubbing and recoating by just providing extra coats to the damaged areas prior to recoating the entire larger area that has been deeply scrubbed. This hallway floor has some scuffs and scratches, and the gloss could be a little deeper. It is likely the finish is just not as responsive to gloss restoration through burnishing as it once was. Also notice 
that though there isn't any built-up finish along the hallway walls, there is a little build-up along the edges of the door frame. Stripping is not necessary to repair these problems. Deep scrubbing and recoating should remove the minor damage and provide a deeper gloss. The fresh top coats will have more responsiveness to the burnisher. Doing a little extra work with a scraper or scrub pad at the door frame edges when scrubbing will clean up the door edges. You will notice that the gloss is not very deep on this floor. It obviously does not need stripping since there is no damage and the layering is even. However, even if this floor did have numerous problems, you would not want to strip it. This is a linoleum floor. If our stripper is used on linoleum or rubber floors, oils will be removed from the floors and the floors will be damaged. This floor requires special care and is another reason why all stripping and finishing should be discussed with supervision. This particular linoleum floor is finished with a low sheen finish for use on linoleum. Special finishes are also used on rubber floors. As noted before, it is important to discuss floor work with your supervisor before starting on a project. You have reached the end of part one. In part two and three of this presentation, you will learn about the equipment, supplies, and procedures used for stripping floors.